Good afternoon and welcome to Hudson Fields here at Hazen Union High School in Hargremont. Hazen Union Varsity Baseball coming at you today. Your Wildcats taking on the Williamstown Blue Devils. Lance Hall here with the call alongside going one on one with the great one today, James Selvis. <laughs> How yeah. you doing, James? Good, Lance. How are you? I'm doing okay. And, of course, we've got Liz on camera getting ready to uh, get things underway here. And teams are, uh, I guess, Hazen is what you're calling warming up, James? Uh, yeah. Warming up. Uh, pitchers getting loose on the mound. Um, guys are throwing it around, just getting ready. Hazen coming in on a two-game win streak. Their record is 7-2. The last two games, they've won 10-zip over Northfield and Danville. Uh, two losses this year at Montpelier back on April. That's lost 10-3, and they lost at PA May 8th by score of 7 to zip. They've actually split the season with PA. Uh, they beat them uh, May 4th, 4 to nothing. Um, they have beat Northfield twice. They beat Danfield twice, and they beat Williamstown uh, first uh, May 1st, 14 zip, and they beat them May 6th, uh, 9 to 6. So uh, Williamstown comes in with a record of 1 and 8. Their lone win against Northfield back on May 13th at my score of 10 to 9. But you know what? Baseball, it's anybody's ball game, right, James? Oh, yeah. Baseball, you know, that's the thing about baseball. Anything can happen on any day, you know, I think more so than basketball or soccer or most other sports. Today is uh, Tuesday, May 18th. Hazen's next game is Thursday the 20th at Edensburg. Then we got a doubleheader here Saturday against Blue Mountain. Monday the 24th, they go to Lamoille. Tuesday the 25th, wrap up the regular season here home against PA. Opening pitch. All right, it's in. Ball high. We're underway. On the mound today, Andrew Menard. Andrew, our lone hockey player ever at Hazen Union High School. Two zip, two zero. Oh. Another ball. <laughs> Thank you. High pop up into foul territory. First baseman, I believe that's Asia Gould. And he puts it under it. And we've got lineups now. Yes, we do. And I'm trying to get a number of that batter. That is number two, which is Gabe. Can you see that last name? Uh, Dexter. Dexter. It's the high pop-up to first. No, that's Blake Clark, number one. Oh, that was Blake yeah. Clark? Yep. That just hit that? Oh, he's up now. Blake is up yeah, now. Yeah, Blake is up now. Dexter just hit that. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, and that one's out. And that one flies out to right for the out. Playing right field is uh, Wyatt Flanders, correct? Yep. Yep. Flanders puts it away out there and right. 2 nothing. Yep. Strike on the outside corner. And this is Max Dexter up now? Yep. For Williamstown. So far it's been two up, two down. Menard fires a ball in, one and one. Swing and a miss by Dexter, one and two. And I can tell already, James, you're a head and shoulders above me when it comes to calling baseball. <laughs> but you watch a lot of baseball. Oh, yeah. Big Red Sox fan. Yeah, so I think it comes with time. And Menard fires it in there, strikes him out, and the side's retired. Three up, three down for the Blue Devils. You know what, James? Oh, yeah. Since you know how to cipher these and everything. Oh, all right, thank you. Um Let's switch roles. Okay. You do play-by-play, -play, I'll do color. Sound good? All right, sounds good. We'll work to each other's strengths. Okay. One, two, three inning to start off uh, the game by Andrew Menard. Solid pitching so far. I also know behind the plate playing catcher for us, it's Jaden Baker. James Montgomery sprained an AC joints in the last game. It's actually Ethan Shopland. It is Ethan Shopland? It is Ethan Shopland. No, nope, Little Shopper is a Little catcher. Shopper is a catcher. Okay. Did no. I mark that wrong on the switch or did I see it wrong? No, no he's marked as here. the catcher. 
Oh, okay, okay, yep, you're, I stand corrected. See, that's why you're here. <laughs> so the mini shopper behind the plate, and uh, yep. once again, we do know that uh, James Montgomery sprained an AC joint. Yes, uh, which is never game. good. No, not for a catcher. No, definitely not. Because catcher is a guy, you know, got to rely on to have his arm behind the plate, you know. Exactly. Kind of need your AC joint to throw. Looks like... Gabe Dexter is going to be the pitcher for the Williamstown Blue Devils, warming up right now. Now, in the last game, I don't know if you saw the replay or not, James, Hazen was extremely aggressive out on the bases. A lot of stolen bases, a lot more attempts and everything. They used really aggressive mm -hmm. ball play yep. to jump out and uh, really handled Northfield. 10-zip uh, game ended early, oh, yeah. which we were very happy of. Liz, I think, got everything packed up just before the front came through. Oh, yes, yep. <laughs> I don't think we have any worries about that today. Is this is oh, yeah. a really nice day for baseball? You it got is. Sunshine, some clouds. You got a pretty good breeze. Oh yeah. Uh, blowing from our right to left yep. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but uh, what's that? What's, what do you mean? <laughs> You know, I've done that before, too, Liz. That's why I did that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, I'm not getting quite so much wind sound now. You know what I mean, James? We're doing a little mic adjustment here. All right, there Get we go. Of the wind. That one's be that's you know, better. I can hear. Yeah, right? That sounds Something better. Something other than the wind blowing in our microphones. All right, Tyson Davison is going to lead it off for the Wildcats. Davison rips one foul down the third base. Offside, he was all over that one by Dexter. Sees that again, that might go down towards Hardwick Water and Light. A one pitch by Dexter. That's in, ooh, generous strike on the outside corner. It looked just a bit outside. Sure did. But you know what? I'm not going to put on that chest protector and stand down there behind there while that ball is being fired in. I agree, Lance. Rocket off the bat by Davison, and that is going to get through for a base hit into right field. Still bobbled around out there. He's going to go oh, for yeah. two. Davison, good speed. He's stretching it out for three. Here comes the throw. Slide. DiMaggio slide. Safe. He might go home. I think he's going to go home. And he is. Tyson Davison. one nothing lead early for the Hazen Wildcats. Was a base hit and three errors in the field. Base hit, and then we have an E4, an E9, and another E4 throwing. You know your baseball, James. I just would have called it an inside the park home run. Yep. <laughs> and now up is a little shopper. Ethan Shoplin's going to step to the plate. The mini shopper. Good yep. power out there. Oh, yeah. So just like that, Hazen's up one zip. Courtesy of Tyson Davison. First pitch from Dexter, low for a ball. Foul ball by Shopland. 0-2 count. Seems like Dexter throws a little bit of heat, but he puts it over the plate a lot. I would not want to be down there facing him. Oh, I Baseball agree. scares the heck out of me. <laughs> a little round, uh, little round ball coming at me that fast. No. It's not so bad when you get used to it. Oh, never mind. First one was a ball, so it's one and two now. Because that was a strike on the outside corner. Ball outside by Dexter. Two and two. Here's the pitch. Shopper. Oh, drop third strike. And Shopland is going to strike out. So one out now for the Wildcats. Tyler Rivard is going to step up to the plate now. Big, big kid for the Hazen Wildcats. It's for power. Good in the field. And he can run. He can. He stole a couple. Uh, he stole a couple bases last time. 
kind of a rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, but he got the job done. Mm -hmm. You know, for a big kid, you know, Tyler really can run. As Lance brought up, you know, he uses that speed to good use on the basketball court. Definitely. First pitch was a ball by Dexter. Second pitch is also a ball by Dexter. 2-0. Oh. <clears throat> Gabe Dexter on the mound, like I said, for the uh, Williamstown Blue Devils. A little high. high. Yep, high pitch, just above the letters. 3-0 and count. On the verge of a walk here. Will he take or will he swing? He's going to take one. So that'll be a 3-1 count now to Rivard. A lot of times you're going to take a pitch there in a 3-0 situation, unless it's a pitch too good not to swing at. Swung at that Ooh. one. Rivard wanted that one, let me tell you. If he made contact, that might go down to Hardwick Elementary. Absolutely. 3-2 and two count, full count. Yes. Little chopper. Foul. Rivard fights it off, got to protect. Anything close, he's swinging. Low. And that is going to be ball four, so first walk of the day for Gabe Dexter. Now stepping up to the plate is going to be Jaden Baker. All right, now we have Jaden Baker. And where's Jaden playing in the field? Jaden is playing center field. Okay. So now we have Jaden Baker. Tell wears number 12. Just like, uh, well, in basketball he doesn't wear 12 because that was Isaiah, but I'm sure he will in the future. Exactly. Number we may see hanging in the rafters here one day. Exactly, yeah, I agree. Ooh, high strike call there to Jaden Baker. But Dexter fires one in, 0-1. Oh, you know, the Bakers are just so much fun to watch during the basketball season and just all around, just good athletes, both of them. Absolutely, had a ball with them in soccer too last year. Guys can play. Revired out on first. Mm -hmm. Kicking up some dust. Oh yeah, he wanted to go, but Baker's gonna watch it for a strike. 0-2 oh, count. One out. <laughs> Ball on the outside. Ball outside. So it is a one and two count now to Jaden Baker. The sophomore center fielder for the Hazen Wildcats. Hit a home run in his last game against the Danville Indians. That ball's hit hard on the ground, and that's going to squeak through for a base hit. Revert's going to think about it, but then stop at second. That's right, uh, Mike Demand Baker was telling us. Sure was. About Jaden's home run against the Anvil. Now the pitcher, Andrew Menard, is going to step up to the plate for the Wildcats. Baker hit that one hard on the ground, and it'll get through for a base hit, so that'll work. Two on for the Wildcats. Revard at second, Baker at first. One out. One out. First pitch from Dexter. Menard tries to bump, but that's going to be a strike. Oh, one count now. Ooh, fire is another high and outside strike call. And I brought this up last game, uh, James. I can stand corrected if you know any different. I believe Andrew was our first ever hockey player here at Hazen Union High School. Uh, I'm going to take your word for it, Lance, because I don't know any different, but it sounds right to me. Played for Linden this past winter. Oh, wow. Hockey. Because I was going to say that's probably the closest hockey team here to Hazen, right. except driving to Stowe, maybe. Comes the pitch to Menard. Menard rips one wow. left field. And that one's over his head, so that's down. They're going to wave Revard in. Here comes the throw. Here comes the throw. It's going to be late, and Revard scores. It's 2 0 Wildcats. Nice double for Andrew Menard. Sends uh, oh, Baker yeah. to third. Hazen up two zip. Yep, we got runners on second and third. One, uh, two down in the inning. Now, Brandon Crawford, the third baseman, is going to step up for the Wildcats. Dexter in a bit of a jam early here for the Blue Devils. Hazen not needing real aggressive base running like they did last time because everybody's hitting them in today. Oh, yeah. That shot, I thought, maybe had a chance to go a little bit further out there to left with the, but the wind's blowing in, so it's going to knock it down. 
First pitch strike to Crawford. Crawford swings and misses. 0-2 to Crawford, I believe, or 1-2. It's like an 0-2, maybe? 0-2. Oh, and 0-3. And, oh, and Crawford Struck strikes out. out. Second strikeout of the day for Gabe Dexter. Got little Shopper to fan. Second at bat. Two outs now, bottom of the first. Wyatt Flanders steps up to the plate for the Wildcats. Two on and two out. Dexter kicks and delivers. Fires a strike in on the outside. I tell you, Dexter really likes that outside corner. Been pretty consistent with it. Yes, he has. The ump's been giving it to him. So. I was going to say, if you can get the umpire to give you the call, and you can be consistent. Why not? F Flanders chases a high one there. Oh, yeah. That one seems like it had a little heat behind it. See, Dexter's been throwing some gas today on the mound. He's got an arm. Sure does. Strike and three. strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the inning for Dexter. Two runs. For the Wildcats in the inning. Dexter gets himself out of a little bit of a jam there. You know, he had yeah. two, two men on still. Two so. men on. Did allow two runs, but you're right. Lance does get out a little bit of a jam. Strikes out three in the inning, though. So it could have been a lot worse, but when all is said and done, Hazen leads two zip. It is. After one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see if the Cats can hold on for another shutout, maybe. Oh, yeah. We'll see. They've been pitching, uh, been playing very, very well as of late. You know, 7-2 and two on the year. Had a solid record, you know. Played some good games and beat some good teams so far. So, you know, Menard threw the ball well in the first inning, you know, one, two, three inning. Spencer and Joe doing a good job down there on the bench. And I think I just saw the trooper, Opie Upson, pull in here. You may be right, Lance. I don't know who that is. But. Like he's the, he's uh, the other coach. Or maybe even the coach. No, I believe uh, Spencer's the head Spencer, coach. All right, Spencer, yeah, and Joe and, and Opie are assisting. Yep. Uh, of course, Opie at Vermont State Trooper, hence the Trooper. The Trooper, yeah, that's. I'll try not to bust out and sing too much of that oh, Iron yeah. Maiden song today. You know, for people that are you know going to be new to watching this broadcast, uh, you know, for people that don't know Lance very well, Lance is known for his nicknames, and that's you know, one thing that has graced the HCTV airways for many years. Do my best to be uh, as good a Chris Berman as I can be. <laughs> the nicknames are very, very popular around here, as you hear us say, Little Shopper quite often. Right. Comes from uh, his brother Russell's nickname, I'm sure Shopper. Who was the Shopper. The Shopper. The Shopper. I will never forget a baseball, uh, basketball playoff game. I believe it was against uh, Twin Valley here at Hazen a number of years ago where the shopper, uh, talking about Russ, just took the game over that day. And I remember hearing about that. Russ had an incredible phenomenal game. Phenomenal game. Phenomenal game. I mean, it was a team effort, but boy, did he spark a lot of things. He was just all over the court doing everything that needed doing. Who we got up for Williamstown, James? Jameson uh, Lacan Lacarzo stands up. Canzo. I think that's what it says. Menard High. Yep. Number seven, pitching to number seven. 1 0 count. For Lacanzo. Ooh, looked like looked like a strike to me, but the ump calls it a ball. Two and zero. Oh. I saw just a little low, but that's me. Yep, could have been just a little low. Third pitch, there that one's go. in there. When I get a strike now, two and one. Fouled back by Lacan uh, by Lacanzo, two and two. You know, a lot of a you know different environment than uh, commentating a baseball game than there is a basketball game. It is. Even even soccer, you know, there's just so much. It's like I said last time. You know, there's so much space at times, mm -hmm. and there's times where you seemingly not you don't have a whole lot going on, and then yep. all of a sudden it's a leap into quantum physics. Oh, yeah. The ball's here, the runner's there, the throw's here. I mean, 
I admire anybody. I have a greater admiration for anybody that can call baseball right now. And I got to tell you right now, James, you're slaying it. You're slaying <laughs> well, thank it. Thank you. Because that was a ball low by Menard to load up the count, three and two. Here's the pitch, and Lakenzo Lican fires another one off, off to the right behind first. You know, Lakenzo right now making uh, Menard work on the mound. Listen, he's not going to go out easily, that's for sure. No, he's not. Has a sweet arm sleeve on his right arm, too. And that's going to be low ball four for a walk for Menard. Now, this next gentleman coming up for Williamstown from here looks tall. Yes, Ari Shoemaker. Tall, rangy, athletic looking. Yeah, kind of like Tyler oh, Revard, yeah. just yeah. a little bit taller. Yeah. Or the same number as Tyler Revard, too, coincidentally. He's just a little bit taller. Let's see what he can do. Menard kicks and fires. Low, and that's ball one. Shoemaker watches it low. Menard fires. And that is driven out to center field, and that is going to be a base hit for Ari Schumacher. Beautiful drop in right up straight center. Oh, yeah. You know, got one a little bit low in the zone. Seemed like he put a good swing on it and just drove a one hopper right to center field. And after going down one, two, three in the first, Williamstown now making a little bit of a comeback. Mm -hmm. First two men up on base. Williamstown, you know, another you know good ball team that Hazen's got to play today. So now stepping up is Riley Cheney for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Let's see what Menard does. And we're going to see a bunt now, and that's going to be a foul ball. Lance, this is a fun fact I don't know if you knew. So if you have two strikes on you and you bunt and foul it off, that's an out. I did not know that. So not smart to bunt with two strikes. It's the only time you can foul a ball out, uh, foul a ball and get it called strike three. I did not know that. So strike one on the foul ball by Cheney. Menard kicks and delivers. Another bunt now, and that one is going to roll foul as Aisha Gould picks it up. So 0 and 2 the count, so the chances of him bunting now are slim, slim to, none. to none. Okay. If he bunts a third time, I'd be I have, shocked. I have learned something here today, James. Oh, eat my shirt if he bunts right now. Menard from the stretch. Fires it in. That's fouled off. Got a piece of the bat. Back hit shopper in the chest. That's why we wear the gear back there. Menard going to try and work his way out of trouble. Menard with two on. From the stretch, he fires. And Cheney flies one. High fly ball out to center field. Jaden Baker and underneath it, and he makes the catch. Can of corn out there in center for Jaden Baker. I've been waiting to say that. Can of corn. Now, yes. where does where does that saying come from, James? What does um, can of corn mean? Can of corn means it's just like a routine play, you know, something nice and easy for your outfielder or for an infielder on a pop-up, something you're going to put away easy. Okay. Now, Taven Rulo is going to step up for the Williamstown Blue Devils. I believe he plays basketball as well. So that is going to be a ball. Look good. I thought so, too. Thought it was right at the numbers, but ball for Menard. 1-0 count to Rulo. Menard fires one in there. That is to the smoke gap. towards right field. That is going to be cut off out there in right field by Wyatt Flanders, but a run is going to come in. 2-1 to one lead now for the Wildcats. As Taven Rulo drives in Lacanzo uh, from second base. Runner still at first and second. Yep. Menard in a bit of a jam. Let's just see one, what happens. Just one out. Now, James DeForge steps up for the Blue Devils and he swings and misses. I believe he also plays basketball or another sport for the Blue Devils. I've definitely heard that name in the past. 
I didn't get to call any Williamstown games this past winter. It was sort of a messy winter with everything. Strike two. Yep, swing and miss again by DeForge. Good we, pitch by Menard. It was one of those winners and seasons where we took what we could get and we were happy. Oh, that. yes, I agree. You know, I've... I tried to, you know, get some, uh, get to call some games, you know, with you, but school started right after. Uh, That's right. You were busy as well. Yep. Foul ball. That one hit hard by and DeForge. You, and you were going to school where and for what, James? At uh, NVU Linden for uh, broadcast journalism, there actually. There you go. So okay. I already got a head start on that. Yes, you do. At least do. on the broadcast part. Absolutely. No, but these games are a lot of fun and, you know, low ball by Menard. One and two count. Still just one out, correct? Yes. One down. Menard still pitching from the stretch because there's runners on base. Menard, that ball's hit hard. That's on to second for one, on to first. Can't quite turn a double play. Gould picked it, but it's, uh... oh, so they are gonna, Say that there was a double play out at first. So we got the 4 6 3 double play to end the inning. A little Taylor made double play to second. Went from Davison to Rivard to Gould. And the Williamstown coach is not too happy about uh, Yeah, it was actually an interference an call. An interference in call, base. which is what we, we dealt with in the game last, the last game we did here last week, only they called it on Tyler. On a, yep. on a sort of a, not quite, it was a play at second. I don't want to say it's similar, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where the third out came from. Oh, yep. Was the so, interference call. Uh, okay. There wasn't out at first then, I guess. Good pick over that's there. That's what by they're saying. Well, they're saying... The runner going from the runner first to second. First to second interference, okay. so they called him out. So the out was at second right. first, and then the guy that, going from first to second. Right, was what they called the interference on, if I am if I heard everything correctly and what I'm seeing. So uh, when all is said and done, we go to the bottom of the second. Williamstown does score one run. Hazen with a 2-1 lead right now. Oh, yep. Now, James, explain to me what pitching from the stretch is. So pitching from the stretch, you see right now how the Williamstown pitcher is in his windup. He's doing that because nobody's on base, so you have more time to just kind of, you know, just go from the windup if there is. Okay, like that. That's the windup. Yeah, up. that's the windup. The stretch is when you don't do any of that. You just stand there yeah, and throw Yeah, you just kind of stand there and throw it. Okay. And you do that normally with uh, runners on base because if you have to make a pickoff move, you know, you can turn quick, real quickly and go. turn real quick and go. Okay. You don't have to worry about trying to, like, step off and move, okay. you know, every which direction and stuff, so. These are a lot of terms that I've heard but have never quite really grasped, you know? Dexter is going to stay on the hill for uh, the Blue Devils. Gabe Dexter. It seems like we have Dexter brothers out there. We have Max Dexter and Gabe Dexter. Dexter has been throwing. He has. Max Dexter, the shortstop, and Gabe Dexter throwing the ball pretty well for the Blue Devils this far. As Dan DeGroslier steps up. I believe that's how you say it. We'll call him Double D, Dan DeGrosley. <laughs> As he watches a ball from Dexter. Dexter kicks and fires. And that is gonna be a strike right down the middle. Good pitch from Dexter. As DeGrosley's takes. I probably would have taken there too. And that is just outside for a ball. Two and one count. And that is fouled off. Look out, bus. Oh, tree Into knocked it down. Tree back here. Knocked it down by the tree, and that is going to be a 2 2 count now. Two DeGrosliers. Ooh. Just a little bit high. I think we got lucky there personally. Full count to DeGrosliers. DeGrosliers. Double D. Yeah, double D. Double D takes the full count, swing. And foul. fouls it to the backstop. Count remains full. You know, wind's kind of died down a little bit since yeah. the start of the game, Lance. Dan fouls one. one right back at us almost. 
And, that, and bounces over the car. That is just going to miss the Ford Focus. Ford uh, Escape behind us. I'm sorry. <laughs> thought that one was coming for us, Lance. I thought so, too. And Dan is going to strike out. Gabe Dexter picks up strikeout number four on the day. Valiant effort by Double D to try and stretch that at bat out. It Get is. Ahead. Oh, Asia Gould, one of those weird lefties, throws left bats right. Normally it's lefty lefty or right left or right left, but not common is it left right and that's gonna squeak by for a base hit into left field. Gould gets the first, he's gonna stop. Good rip there by Asia Gould. Hard hit off the bat to left field. Well, I right with my left, throw with my right, bat right, and hammering a nail, either one. Mm -hmm. That was ripped past the forge at third. And now it's back to the top. Tyson Davison is gonna step up now for the Wildcats. He's gonna face Dexter for the second time. As you see Dexter now in the stretch with Gould on first. All right, now I know what I'm seeing. And that's why he does it. Yep. Snap throw to first. Trying to catch Gold out there napping, didn't. Nope. Gold's Asia too back. quick for that. Asia also a good bass. Ooh. An alumnus of uh, Greensboro, the, a former Lakeview Laker. <laughs> yeah, takes off. Gold takes There's off. Throw. throw to second. Through. And Gold is going to be safe. He swipes the bag. And there's that aggressive base running that we saw in the last game. Yep, the aggressive base running, you know, very common for the Hazen Wildcat baseball team. You know, got a lot of fast runners, so, you know, not surprising to see Gould in motion there. So it's a 1-1 one -one count to Davison. Davison pops one up. And that is put away over there by Max Dexter. One away, as Lance just said. Now Little Shopper is going to step in for the second time today. Little Shopper struck out his first at bat, if I remember correctly. He did. See if Went he down make, swinging. Make amends here. Man on like, second. Man on second with one down. That is smoke down the left field line, but foul by Little Shopper. Way foul. He gave that one a ride. But foul. That had been fair. Might have had another RBI. Ball was smoked by Little Shopper. I believe his brother Russ played baseball too, if I remember correctly. Excellent pitcher. Yeah, Russ was a very good baseball player. Is that his thought foul by Little Shopper? Dexter allowed one hit so far this inning. The hard hit single by Gould. Steps off. Now you see sometimes if you try and uh, look back to second and don't throw, that is called a balk and the runner gets a free base. So you have to either step off or throw it. And they say little Shopper went, and that is going to end the inning. So Shopper back-to-back -back strikeouts so far in the game. That moves Dexter's total up to five. And he is not happy with his performance so far. He so is not. He's a competitor. He is. See if he can get it back. That's, uh, that's the Shopland way, though. It is. Russ was the same way. Hard workers. Very. And, and you know, they want to perform. They practice hard. They, they play do. hard, and they expect to perform. Sure do. And as you said, Russ was a very good pitcher. I remember Actually playing him good. freshman year, and he was incredible. You see the head coach now is going to come out and warm up Menard while Little Shopper gets his gear on. So we move now to the top of the third, I believe, with Hazen leading 2-1 to one still. Yep. Menard had a bit of a rough inning last inning, but we'll see if he can turn it around. And just like Dexter in the inning before, it could have been a lot worse though. They had some base runners on. Andrew kind of pitched himself out of a jam a little bit. He did. He had so, some runners on base, but like you said, didn't let it phase him. Just stayed composed. We've seen both pitchers um, sort of get themselves into a little bit of trouble, allow some runs, but not as bad as it could be. Yes. I believe Menard only has one punch out on the day. Uh, 
I have been totally remiss, uh, James. I have not read our sponsors yet today. Our sponsors for Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball today, Buffalo Mountain 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. This is Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, of course. And Sperry Lawn Care, 7458336. When others can't cut it, they can. Sperry Lawn Care. Once again, HCTV, Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. My apologies to the sponsors for waiting three innings in before I did the read. We'll My bad. Some I would have read them, Lance. I just didn't know where they were. Yeah, had them down on there. Feel free at any point. We'll do a few makeups for the sponsors. Sure will. Lance Hall uh, doing color with the call. Yeah. I am standing side by side with the great one, <laughs> James Salvis. Liz on camera. Griff's working. Been a pleasure so far. It's been a James. Beautiful night. Yeah, it's it's been incredible. Menard now. I feel like I'm alongside Joe Buck here. <laughs> Menard from the windup now is going to fire. And that is fouled off by Shingra, Cameron Shingra, number nine hitter for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Menard now from the windup, kicks and fires, and that is fouled back close to us. Gonna miss all the cars though. Thankfully. 0 and 2 count to Shengra. Menard now from the windup, he kicks and fires. And that is a called strike three on the outside corner. Good pitch there by Andrew Menard. I believe that is his second punch out of the day. They go around the horn and back to him. And now back. Get his confidence going now. Oh Let's yeah. Now back to the top is Gabe Dexter steps in for the Blue Devils. And that is smoked out towards center field. Baker and underneath it. And he's gonna put that away, no problem out there in center, two down. Jaden Baker, looking good out there. High fly ball, but Jaden made the adjustment nicely to get over underneath it. He made sure did. That is routine for the outfielder. Jaden took a couple steps back, put it away. As now Blake Clark's gonna step in for the Williamstown Blue Devils to face Menard. Two down. Menard kicks and fires. That is going to be low for a ball. As we said, it is 2-1 Hazen lead. Actually, bottom of the second, I believe. Or no, bottom top, of the third. Top, top, top third. Top of the third. That ball is hit on the ground hard. Davison scoops it up, and he fires to Gould, and that'll do it. 1-2-3 inning for Menard, and down go the Blue Devils. Like you... Uh, Compare me to uh, Joe Buck. Appreciate it. Absolutely. More of a Matt Vaskersian fan myself. Okay. You go with him then. All right. Sounds good. I don't know if you know who that is, but. I do not. Who's Eve? Commentates a lot for uh, MLB Network. Okay. Okay. Him and uh, Harold Reynolds and Dan Fleesack is normally that crew. Harold Reynolds, I know. Um, well, you can be the Harold Reynolds to <laughs> my Matt Vaskersian. <laughs> Harold Reynolds, a good ball player back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, great ball player. Really good in the field. Didn't have much power. Hit singles and doubles guy. Speedy. This fall, of course, will be the uh, 35th anniversary of one of the greatest World Series that I ever watched. Uh, probably a lot of pain for you. Uh, yep. I'll just say this. Buckner behind the bag. I wasn't alive at that time, but I, a lot of heartache for the uh, Sox fans. Of course, I'm talking about the Mets, Red Sox, uh, epic 1986 World Series. Gary which, Carter, what a great catcher, yeah, too. Yeah. Of which the Red Sox at one point in game six were one strike away twice. From breaking the from curse. From winning it all. From breaking the curse of the Bambino. And I remember when that game ended, I and I was rooting for the Red Sox that year because I hated the Mets. I did not like the Mets at all. So I said, well... I'm a Yankees fan, but I'll root for the Red Sox because I hate the Mets. That is the most shocking thing I've ever heard in my life. And Yankees fan rooting for the Red Sox. I hated the Mets. And at the end of game six, I remember 
sitting there saying, how can anybody in their right mind ever root for this team? <laughs> oh, saying that about the Red Sox? Yes. Like, how? Uh. Now Tyler Revard about to step in for the Hazen Wildcats, his second time up. And James, I have nicknamed Tyler T-Rex. T-Rex? T-Rex. I was going to go with TR. I decided to go with T-Rex. I think T-Rex sounds better. Yeah. A little how'd you, meaner. Uh, how'd you come up with that one? Just popped into my head, like all of them. As that is a low ball by Dexter. 1-0 to Reverb. It'll work good in basketball because he definitely goes into beast mode. He, def oh, he definitely does. Reverb works very hard. That ball is hit hard foul down to the third base line. 0-2 to Reverb. I believe Reverb had a hit in his first AB. He did. Got on base. Had a single, hard hit single. Reverb 0-2. Pitch from Dexter. Ooh. My bad. Must be a one and two count now. I thought there was two strike. That ball is a called strike on the outside. That outside corner. Dexter's been pounding it. it. And that ball is hit hard and foul. I Revard thought, has made solid contact with a couple pitches this AB. I thought that one had stayed fair. It must have just went foul. I thought it did too. Just barely before the bag must have went foul. One two count now to Revard. Revard hits that one in play, and that is going to squeak through for a base hit to left field. Tyler Revard, two for two on the day. T Rex gets the first. Nice hit there by Revard, worked through it, fouled a couple balls off, finally found one he liked and drove it. As that is going to bring up the infamous Jaden Baker. The butcher, the baker, the home run maker last game. Sure was. You know, if I ever get to call another uh, basketball game here, I might have to start using that. Butcher the Baker, the three-point maker, is what they go. say about uh, Isaiah Baker in basketball. Exactly. So that's a ball inside to Jaden. Such a sweet shot. Oh, man. That kid can shoot it from anywhere. Ball would drop through, and I mean, it hardly even ripple the net. Oh, man. He was so much fun to, you know, commentate for. Baker that ball is hit down hard down the right. right field line, and that is going to get down. Jaden Baker, two for two. This one a single. Ooh, thought about two, but. Revard goes for third. Revard's going to move up to third. Runners at the corners. Runners at the corners, one down. Menard steps to the plate. I tell you, that was a hard hit ball by Baker. Was. I thought that might trickle further down the line, and he might have got two out of that, but. Spencer's going to hold him. Right fielder over there and showing some good speed out there. Because I did too. The way that ball curled, I thought it was going to be going. You know. Me too. I thought that down was. down over the hill, down to West Church Street. Oh, yeah. I thought that was headed down towards the Judevine Library. Right down the hill. Dexter in a bit of a jam again here for the Blue Devils. Runners at the corners. Uh, what do we have? Two out? One down. Uh, no, two outs. I was going to say, according to the scoreboard over there, I think. No, it's one out. Cause one out. No outs, because Revard led off. And a stolen base now. Jaden Baker, he's going to swipe it. Good speed by Baker at first, we know that. Uses that speed well on the basketball court. And impressive. on the soccer field. I believe Jaden plays soccer. Yep. Andrew Menard. I'm going to have to think of a hockey name for him. Pitch to Menard, and he drives one to left field. Left fielder and under it, though. He's going to put it away. Revard tags. Here comes the throw. Way late, and Revard scores. Sack fly and an RBI for Andrew Menard. Cats up 3-1 as T-Rex chugs on down the third baseline. Looking for home. Revard can move for a big kid, like you said, Lance. Deceptive. Brandon Crawford's going to step in now for the Wildcats. Okay, now I see the scoreboard. We have one out. Yes, yes one out. Okay. One down for Crawford. You see the Louis Tiant turn on the mound by a uh, Gabe Dexter. I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, uh, Louis Tiant, yes, sir. See him turn back like in, Louis Tiant. Back looking. in the 70s, yes. Great pitcher for uh, the Red Sox. Sure was. 
and we're gonna have a mountain visit. Dexter and Lacanzo are gonna talk it over. Runner at second with one down. Now with the uh, fly out by Menard. That drove in Tyler Rivard to make it a 3-1 Cats lead. Dexter now allowed his third run of the game and a bit of trouble on the mound. He's going to kick and fire. That is high and inside to Brandon Crawford, dust him off. We've seen Dexter get into jams and get himself out of jams. Sure have, but that's been the same on both sides today. Same with Menard. Same with Menard as well. Both pitchers throwing pretty well on the mound today. That's going to be low ball two to Crawford. And I would say the gentleman behind the plate umpiring has been fairly consistent in his calls. He sure well. has. Because Dexter, like we said, likes to go for that outside corner. Doesn't call the strike all day. Turn and throw. Oh, he turns and throws. Baker goes. Caught in the rundown. Baker now in a pickle. Baker's gone. He's going to third. He's going to turn back. Oh, and Baker gets tagged out trying to go to third. Nice Good play by Dexter to that quick throw back there. Yes, it was. I think he might have been gone if he tried to dive back. Who knows, though? I think Baker, when they were trying to throw it back to second, if he had stayed going, he might have made it back. But Baker is hosed. And he is not happy. There goes the helmet. Now Dexter from the windup is going to kick and fire. That is a strike over the middle. 1 2 count, uh, 2 1 count now to Brandon Crawford. Big power hitter for the Hazen Wildcats. And Brandon's going to hit a hard single right up the middle. That's exactly where you want to put it. I'll give Jaden about a six on the helmet throw for accuracy and intent, uh, lacking a little bit on velocity. I agree. It's like when you hit a home run and you do a bad bat flip. Now stepping in for the Wildcats is Wyatt Flanders. Cats up 3-1, two outs, bottom of the third. Still says second for whatever reason, but it's the third inning. A little behind on that over there. Oh, yeah. But the score is all that really matters. That's why we're here. Keep See some honest. dark clouds rolling in, Lance. Unfortunately, I don't think it's. I don't think we're going to be okay. Well, right. I'll, I'll explain that in a second, James. All right. That over there, that is the infamous Hall Mountain vortex. Fouled Foul off tip. there by Flanders. That one's headed towards the bus. Ooh, does skip up on a car. Yeah, missed mine. <laughs> Bounced up and hit the car though. Hopefully, uh, only a little contact there. Yeah. Dexter fouls it off the catcher. So it is a 2-2 two -two count, I believe. No, 0-2. 0-2 uh, oh two. Oh two count to Flanders. Outside ball, 1-2 count now to Flanders. Dexter so far has been able to work his way out of that jam, just like we talked, Lance. That he has. Still five strikeouts on the day, a, throwing the ball pretty well for the uh, Blue Devils. He is a fighting pitcher, as we'll call it. Sure is. As that ball is hit hard on the ground, and he's going to flip it over to second. The side's retired. Okay, once again, James, our, uh, let's do our sponsors here today. Sponsoring us today, Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball against Williamstown. This is Tuesday, May 18th. Uh, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. Give John a call. He'll take care of it for you. Liz on camera, Lance Hall doing color and doing an excellent job on the play-by-play -play today. I am standing one-on-one -on -one with the great one, James Salvas. Thank you very much, Lance. As we see Menard from the windup now, he kicks and fires. Dexter fouls one straight back. Nice, nice catch. Over there by a lucky fan behind us. Barehanded snag. Look at that's Randy Lumsden. Randy Lumsden. 
<laughs> One hand snag over there. Didn't even have to move. Former Hardwick Mustangs coach. <laughs> and a f and a fantastic athlete in his own. So that is outside for a ball. One and one. Now to Max Dexter. And we're going to note that was a barehanded catch on a it pretty was. hot shot back here. Yeah. Lamston is unfazed. As there is a fly ball. Revired under it, and he puts it away easy. T-Rex with the catch. Can of corn over there to Revard, and he puts it away. Dexter with the uh, pop out. So now Lacanzo steps in for the Blue Devils. Like I said, he has a sweet arm sleeve on that right arm, Lance. Was it Lacanzo who scored the, the one run for Williamson? Uh, I believe I don't remember if it was him who, who came in on the run. I think it was. But I'm not positive. Uh, I believe it was. That was a while ago. It sure was. Digs down in There's the a hit to Crawford. He fires one over to Gould. Good pick. Scoops it out. Throw in the dirt, but a good pick at first. Saves an error. Nice concentration by Asia over there. That's what you got to have as a first baseman. You know, you keep your eye right behind the mitt and just look it in. That was a pretty easy scoop, though, for Asia. Asia. Two up, two down for the Blue Devils so far here. The and now Ari Shoemaker steps in. Top of the four, 3-1 Hayes. Menard from the windup kicks and fires. And that is fouled back. Hey, and a nice, oh, nice catch crack. by Mike Baker. Mike DeMan Baker. Mike DeMan Baker with another with bare hand catch. snag over there. <laughs> nice catch by Mike Baker. Would you expect anything less from DeMan? Of course not. Mike Baker wears a lot of hats around here. That ball's hit hard on the ground. Revard can't, can't like scoop that. it up. I don't know if that'll be scored as a base hit or an E6. I'm going to say that that was probably a base hit. Could be an E6, though. We'll say base hit. Is that is a base end result, hit? End result is a man on for Williamson. Sure is. Two out. Top of the Menard first. got the first two guys. Now allows a base hit as Riley Cheney steps in for the Blue Devils. Ooh, that looked really good to me, Lance. It did. Menard, I don't think. Uh, but once again, whoever I, we, don't, I'm, we don't know the umpire's name, but he's been calling consistent. We've seen pitches like that before called that way. So Yes. Um, and I think, you know, obviously the key to umpiring. Is consistency. Consistency. It's not easy, though. No. I've done it. Not at this level, but <laughs> done it at baseball camps. I don't know if that counts. but Yeah, hey. 2-0 count. Now to Cheney. Menard kicks, fires. That one's driven out to center, but Jaden's got that one no problem, and the side is retired. Cats up 3-1 after four. They're headed to the bottom of the fourth, I believe. Yeah, James, I think the dark clouds are blowing off. See, what we've going on yep. up here is the Hall Mountain Vortex. Yes. Uh, it's a weather phenomenon known only to that part of the world. And uh, it's, it's pretty Assuming serious. that's your neck of the woods, Lance? Yeah, well, my brother lives up there. And uh, I'll tell you, smiling Tom Messner yep. never, never smiles when he's talking about the Hall Mountain Vortex. <laughs> doesn't smile. That's Assuming thing, you know Tom Messner? That's the one thing that'll wipe the smile off of Tom Messner's face is a mention of the Hall Mountain Vortex. Does he bring it up on the air? <laughs> and he hasn't yet, but he's gonna. Oh, he will. No, that leads back to uh, a, a tale back. Um, my brother lives up there in Hideaway Acres. He had another gentleman who lived down below him just across the street from him. And if, if the guy down below him had 10 below, Tim had 15 below. If the guy down below him had two inches of snow, Tim had 10 inches of snow. So he said he must live in a vortex up there. Oh, yeah. Is a phenomenon. But you're right, the clouds are kind of blowing through as we stay with a blue sky over the Hudson Field here. Just a great day for baseball today. Once oh, sure again, is. Uh, if I can just see my notes, we can reel off the Cats schedule once again. Uh, they're playing Thursday at Enosburg, travel up north. Then we got a doubleheader here Saturday against Blue Mountain. Next Monday, they're playing at Lamoille. And next Tuesday, the 25th. We close out the regular season with a home game against my alma mater, People's Academy. People's Academy. 
think you normally refer to alma mater as college, but. In our case, it'll be high school. Yes. I didn't go to college. <laughs> in my case, it'll be high school. So over there at uh, NVU Linden, what type of, now this past year with the pandemic, were you able to go to school? Were you remote? How did, how did that uh, go? Yeah, I was, I was on campus. You, um, you know, classes were a mix of in-person and Zoom. Uh, difficult though, you know, kind of stressful because we really didn't have any time off and it was just work every single day. Right. And Dan DeGrosliers is going to step up for the Wildcats. Double right. D. Double D, as called by Lance Hall. In the top half of the inning, we saw some phenomenal catches by Randy Lamston and Mike Baker. That's right. Randy came down with a nice catch. Sure did. As that ball is ripped over the third baseman's head, and that's a base knock by Dan DeGrosliers. Wow, that was a rocket off the bat. Did you see that one, Lance? I did see that. Whew, that was a rocket. That's why they call it the hot corner over there at third. So we see Aaron, so we see the legendary Hazen basketball coach Aaron Hill Aaron in Hill. attendance now. Right. It's gonna go one. stand over by his counterpart, Mike Baker. I'm thinking of famous third baseman. Uh, the first one that automatically comes to mind for me is Greg Nettles. Yep, Wade Boggs. Uh, I'm trying to think, did Brooks Robinson play third? He did. That is a ball to Gould. You can tell I go more old school with my baseball. Mm -hmm. Gould squares oh, up, Gould. Nice bunt, drops it down right to the pitcher. That's a sacrifice bunt by Gould, but he's going to move to Grosliers over to second. Double that's D, it. goes to two. That's exactly what you want to do in that situation, Lance. A nice sacrifice. Normally, you're going to want to try and get it down the line a little bit more, but hey, all works all the same. Moves up the runner. As Tyson Davison, the leadoff man, is going to step in for the third time. Tyson Davison, a good basketball player in his own right. The Grizzlies has got to get back at a close play on a good snap throw by Dexter. Same way they got Baker last time. Was, except Baker was in a pickle and they tagged him. But very close play at second. Still a pick off nonetheless. Dexter now. Everybody making the necessary adjustments. Dexter from the stretch now with a runner on second. He fires. That is low and a ball to Tyson Davison. So I believe it is a one and uh, two and zero oh count to Tyson Davison. Pitch outside. Ball three. Do we take or swing here? Three zero. -oh. Three zero. -oh. It's got to be really, really good to swing. It's kind of an unwritten rule to try and swing 3-0. Oh, now it's 3-0, my fault. High ball three, okay. so now, now it's he's probably taken. As you said, DeGrosley is on second after a rocket off the bat. Wowee, that was hit hard. Ooh, low strike call there by the umpire. Dexter gets the benefit of the doubt, so it's gonna be 3-1. I would have taken that one too. Yeah. Yep, definitely that low. Yep. Davison's gonna hit one on the ground to third. Oh, nice pick by the shortstop. Throw to first, double D is gonna go to third. They call Tyson out at first on a bang bang play. I thought he beat it. Davison with great speed. Good hustle by Tyson. Looked like he wanted to throw the helmet, didn't. But you're right, Double D is going to move up to third as Little Shopper trying to get something going at the plate 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. I was going to say, Little Shopper a little off at the plate today. Let's see if he, uh, he is. can get something rolling here. Little Shopper, good pitch there by Dexter for a strike. Called Dexter strike. Dexter still with five strikeouts on the day. Had those very early on in this game. Hasn't done much sense in the strikeout department. That is outside. Going to be a 1-1 one, one count now to Little Shopper. Like we said, Little Shopper, an absolute workhorse in every single sport. Plays tough. Sure does. High strike call there to Little Shopper. So it is a 1-2 and two count now. Little Shopper is going to dust him off, see if he can get a pitch to hit here. Fired in there, and Little Shopper is going to fly one to center field. 
puts it away, and that's going to be the end of the inning. So through four, 3-1 Wildcat lead. So getting back to your college experience um, this past winter, you did get some, some in-class time and everything like that. Did you get... Uh, now they have full, like full production studios over there, don't they? You have TV uh, they have radio a full news. Yep, they have a newsroom. Uh, they have a radio station. Were you able to get you know on the radio station at all? Uh, tried to, newsroom? but I was pretty busy with school and you know managing the basketball team over there. So we were on the road a little bit. And... Oh, so you manage the basketball team? Over yes, there. excellent. And uh, excellent. I'm going to be commentating for them next year in the fall. So I'll be commentating for their basketball team over there at Linden. Now, do they broadcast? Live, live television uh, or is it radio you get it uh it's television so you get it uh on their website on the linden athletics website excellent excellent so we'll have that uh our equipment is uh brought to us by nsn northeast sports network for nice. those of you who don't know yeah. i've commentated a game for them i got to do that a oxbow linden institute game uh excellent. this semester excellent so that now, was, was a that, lot of fun was that as part of a Work thing for school? No, nope, they just, just got to uh, do, you just called you NSN got just it. called me and said, "Hey, that's awesome." You know, I was in the works for potentially commentating a game for them, and they called me up and said, "Hey, can you do this game?" And I was like, "Absolutely." Excellent. Of course, the radio station WWLR, the Buzz. Yep. Over there as well. Ninety-seven point. Ninety-one point five. Ninety-one. <laughs> it's close. Not really though. Menard has pitched well as he works into the fifth inning with a 3-1 lead given to him by his Wildcat counterparts. And he's had fun in the show as well. Little Shopper 0 for 3 at the plate, though. Struggling a little bit today. Struggling a little bit, but just one of those guys that, you know, when you need him, he's going to be there. So he is. No you know, and like we said, Russ was the same way. Right. And I know Ethan in that game that uh, we covered last week, at one point had uh, bases loaded, had worked two outs, had worked the batter to a full count and threw a called strike to get out of a big time, you know, jam. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and as a wise, uh, uh, Dennis Eckersley, one of my favorite commentators, as he would say when the bases are loaded, the bases are drunk. Yeah. Menard kicks and fires, and that's a good pitch for a strike onto Tavian Rulo, who steps in, I believe, for the second time for the Blue Devils. Had a base hit in his first time, I believe. As that is foul tipped into the catcher's mitt, strike two. Good pitch by Menard. Once again, little shopper behind the plate, filling in for James Montgomery, who has sprained an AC in the last game. Which is very necessary as a catcher. Ooh, inside, almost hit him. We'll see how Menard aiming for the ankles. Hopefully he'll be back, uh, you know, soon. Yep. But you don't want to rush something like that either. And as Lance said, you know, upcoming schedule for these Wildcats is that's a low ball by Menard. They have a double. Uh, they head to Enosburg right. for their next game, head north. And then uh, Saturday. Thursday, double header. Yep. And then uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, on the road Monday at Lamoille and here against PA on Tuesday. So Saturday is the double header, I believe. That's right. Yep. And I believe if all goes it. well, Lance and I will be on the call again. I'm hoping, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Lance and I should be on the call again here Saturday. I look forward to that. Come rain or, you know, unless the only thing that messes up here is a little bit of rain, yep. which they are calling for right now. Yes. As a ground out by Rulo. I'll tell you, you mentioned Dennis Eckersley. When we get a moment, I will tell you a fantastic story I read about him and Kirk Gibson and the infamous game one home run. Oh, in yes. The Kirk Gibson. 88 the, World Series. He pounded that off of Dennis Eckersley. Yes, he did. James DeForge watches a ball for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Menard, you know, a little kid, uh, you know, a little kind of short kid, but he throws pretty hard on the mound and he, he hits the ball hard at the plate. Hey, great power. Ooh, that looked good to me too. Menard is getting some tough calls there, some tough love by the home plate umpire. It seems like Dexter's getting him on the other side, but nonetheless, two and zero to DeForge. Swing and a miss. And. Two and one now. Good pitch there by Menard getting the swing and miss by DeForge. I can't tell what Menard's throwing, if he's throwing all fastballs, if he's got other pitches in there and a he's swing and a miss. Strikes. That's yes. the main thing right now. Throw strikes. He is. Andrew Menard. Two two. Menard kicks and fires. 
And swing and a miss, strike three. Menard got him. I believe Menard picks up strikeout number three on the day. Andrew, of course, the son of Ivan and Brenda Menard. Yep. No, the Menards. Lindsay very, Menard, very well. his sister. Yep. Menard's Great very family. big name here in Hardwick. <laughs> know them very well. As Cameron Shangra is going to step in for the Blue Devils as he swings and misses at a good pitch by Andrew Menard as we enter the top of the fifth inning. Menard kicks and fires as that's going to bounce in. Good block behind the plate by Little Shopper. Little Shopper, you can tell, very good on both sides of the ball. Can hit the ball well. Good defensive catcher behind the plate. Absolutely. His baseball, pretty much every sport that he plays kind of runs in his blood, but baseball definitely is. Russ was a very good pitcher and a swing and a miss by Shengra. So it's one and two. Menard getting a little swagger out there on the mound. He is. You see, that's the thing, you know, with pitchers in baseball. When they, when they get in a groove, a lot of times they're hard to hit. Even a bad pitcher, which Menard's not by any means. When they get in a the groove, they are tough to hit. That one's high. 2-2 two -two count there. That one almost at the head of uh, Shengra at the plate. Wonder if we're gonna see any more barehanded snags as Randy Lamston is uh, left. As there is a pop-up. It's over, Rivard wants it. And he puts it away. T-Rex and another one, two, three inning for Andrew Menard. Boy, is he pitching a beauty. So in baseball lore, of course, game one of the 88 series between the Oakland A's and the Los Angeles Dodgers, you know, the epic Kirk Gibson home run. The fist pump that everybody remembers. That everybody remembers. When he went up to bat that night, of course, he could hardly walk. Yep. And Eckersley on the mound, who was one of the premier closers in all of baseball. You know, Hall of Famer, very one of the best closers of all time. And there was a coach on the Dodgers bench who, as Gibson went out, said in a southern drawl, Son, if you work him to a full count, as God is my witness, he's going to throw. I can't remember the exact pitch he said, like a yep. hanging curve or something like that. Yep. He's going to throw you a hanging curve. Of course, Gibson goes out, fouls a bunch of balls off, gets some strikes, works him to a full count. And if you see, just yep. before he hits the ball, he steps out of the out of the batter's box. Yep. And in his head, he hears that coach saying, mm -hmm. if he, you work him to a full count, he's going to throw. A hanger. Something. I yeah. can't remember the name of the He's going to hang something. He's going he's gonna to throw this pitch. Yeah. Gibson stepped in. Eckersley threw the pitch. And Gibson hammered Gibson it. Gibson hammered it. One-handed it out of, you know, out of the park. You know, Gibson, uh, you know, Eckersley, one of the all-time saves leaders, yeah. MVP, Cy Young Award winner, Hall yeah. of Famer. And you know what I've always wondered, too? <laughs> the, the weird things I think about. When you see Gibson's ball go into the stands, in the background, you can see taillights, like brake mm -hmm. lights come on. Like somebody had left the game. Yeah. I want to know who that was and how they felt about being in their car, pulling out of the parking lot yep. to miss that play. Right. Can you imagine? I mean, could you imagine? Kirk Gibson, one of the most legendary home runs in World Series yeah, history. Yeah, yeah, baseball lore. Tyler Rivard, T-Rex is going to step up, up to the, the plate, plate for the Hayes and Wildcats. Lance Hall on the fly with his nicknames, as always. Still working on a good one for Andrew. I got to come up with a good hockey, hockey slash baseball. As I call him in basketball, legendary Lance Hall. And I am one on one with a great one, James <laughs> Salvas. Lance Hall, the voice of the Hazen Wildcats basketball for many years. Get me in there once in a while. Liz on camera. Liz on camera, of course. Best cameraman this side of the Mississippi. As that ball is low by Dexter. She said Griff's at work. Griff's no Griff work. today. Griff's at work. Griff, another guy who puts on the headset once in a while here Absolutely. for HCTV. Another low ball there by Dexter. Liz not only great on camera, but she makes incredible donuts. That is what I've heard. i got to get some of those at some point. She is point. the donut queen. That is what I have heard. Tyler squared around the bump, pulled it back. Strike anyways. 2-1 count to Revard. Lance just does an incredible job of Tyler's name in basketball for the starters. That ball is hit hard, fair down the third base line. Rivard stopped running, thought it was foul, but he is going to be thrown out at first, I believe, or was it a foul ball? I believe it was a foul ball. Rivard's coming back. 
Yep, they're going to call it a foul ball. I thought it was fair down the third baseline. That really looks so fair. Too. But we've been it's sort of hard to tell from this angle because we can't, you know, we're kind of back a little bit. Yeah, kind of behind bit. the visitors dugout. We don't really have the, the perfect angle of it. But, so we've been fooled a couple times, but that's okay. Oh, that one's fair. That's fair. Right to the third baseman. Good pick by the third baseman. Revard's going to dig and Doesn't good pick by the way. first baseman, but he is out. Revard hit that one pretty hard. But the third baseman down there, James DeForge, makes a good scoop and fires it across. The hot corner. As Jaden Baker, the butcher, the baker, the home run maker, stands in for the Hazen Wildcats. His dad made a heck of a play up here earlier. Let's see if Jaden uh, does something here that will cause him not to throw his helmet. Yes. Actually, that was on, a, on the pickoff that he threw his helmet. Yes. He got on base. He did get on base. He had a hit yeah. down the right field line. Caught over there on second. Jaden's two for two. That's Shot. hit to the shortstop. Fire high throw, and Baker is out. Two up, two down for Gabe Dexter on the mound. Good inning for him so far for the Wildcats as we enter the bottom of the fifth. As Andrew Menard steps up. Andrew the Mauler Menard steps up. There's a there hockey go. nickname for you. Yeah, the Mauler. I like it. <laughs> Andrew Perfect. the Mahler Menard steps in. I came up with that you one. You take on the fly. full. You get full credit for that one. I'm not a big nickname. I'm not. I'm not very good at coming up with nicknames myself. But works for baseball. Works for hockey. And the speaking of the Mahler, drives one to left field, but he wow. puts it away. Hard hit off the bat by Menard. That is a that is a fantastic nickname. I like that. Three up, three down for Hazen. Yes. Uh, and that was what the bottom of the fifth. Hazen up three one. Bottom of the fifth. Why don't I tell you what? I'll let you have the reads on the All sponsors. All right. And today, Hazen boys varsity baseball playing Williamstown. We are sponsored by Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen four seven two five five two two and Sperry Lawn Care seven four five eight three three six. When others can't cut it, we can't. Uh, they can. Call John if you need your lawn fixed. <laughs> Him and his boys will take good care of you. Absolutely. Heard him talking about it before the game, actually. He is busy right now. Yes. Doing Thank you lines. for uh, tuning in with us today. On uh, Whenever you get a chance to watch this on the archive. That's right. We're, this game will be archived. On, uh, it's hard to stream live. with. We don't have really any internet yep. out here. but uh, It's different like with basketball. Games. You know, basketball you can stream. And, yeah. You know, soccer you guys find a way. And I'll tell you, you talk about streaming and, and internet and everything. And, and what a thing to have for this last year with everything that went on. Mm -hmm. you know, I saw a lot of schools go to it, too. Yeah. And I, I hope it grows. Um, Me, too. Because, you know, it just gives everybody an opportunity to see what's out there. You get, yep. you know, parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and family and cousins and friends mm -hmm. from literally all over the world that can yeah. Know, tune in and watch. And to be fair, you know, it gives, you know, kids like me a sense, you know, to get some commentary opportunities Absolutely. in other places, you know, get your foot in the door. But also, um, you know, that's one thing when I think of, you know, Hazen, I think HCTV really, you know, is being the first like little company to really get going and do stuff like this. And Been up here a long time. Sure yeah. have. All started in uh, established 2005, Hardwick Community Television. I believe Leaf started it but I'm not entirely positive. I am not sure on that going that far back into the history, but I know it's been a while. But yeah. Started in 2005, that I do know. If you said here, a beautiful Hudson, beautiful Dan Hudson Field. Dan Hudson, for those of you who don't know, I believe was a coach and a very, very good player in his time. Former athletic Hazen. director, uh, yep. assistant principal, uh, coach soccer, coach basketball. More a lot of hats around here. Yeah. Uh, won a uh, championship for two. I think I know he won one. Yep. One and, and they were, yeah, basketball. Uh, yep. High ball. one season. Yep. High ball one by Menard as going Gabe backwards. Dexter is going to step up to the plate now for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Pitch that is fouled back towards us. No Randy Lamston there to make a nice no, barehanded Randy, snag this time. Randy not there for that one. Oh, that one is going to roll over and hit the tire of a Subaru behind us as it is a 1-1 one, one count. Now Menard, he's going to kick and deliver. That is going to be high, ball two. You know, 
one thing I got to start doing, Lance, is whenever I commentate, I try and pick a player of the game, and I got a couple guys in mind tonight. Right. Even though it's been a low-scoring game, I think Revard, who's drove in a run, I believe, T -Rex. could get it. Jaden could get it. He's hit the ball well, but I think ultimately, three-one now by Menard. I might have to give it to Andrew Menard. Andrew Menard has pitched a whale of a game so far. He really has pitching a beauty. As a wise uh, one run. As a wise Eddie Harris said in uh, Major League, I'm throwing every piece of junk I can think of at him, Skipper. <laughs> As that is going to be low, ball four. I believe that's going to be the second walk issued today by Andrew Menard. Menard throws a lot of strikes, and that's one thing you like when you're a pitcher. As Blake Clark is going to step in now for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Can't remember what he did last time up. I can't either. Well, we said low scoring game today here in the top of the sixth, but you know, good pitching on both sides. I mean, good, great pitching, and, and both teams have had chances. You know, Williamstown has had a chance to cut into the lead. Hazen's had a chance to extend the lead, and you know. and little Shopper's going to fire a beauty down to second, and he's safe. A little bit of a high throw by Little Shopper, but they were ready for the steal. As Shopper Gabe trying. Dexter's going to swipe it. Valiant effort. It is a little bit. Let him a little bit too far, though. Let T-Rex a little too far. But you see the arm that Little Shopper does have back there. He does. Menard tries to throw a pickoff, and he's safe at second, keeping him honest over there. So like I said, both teams have had chances. You know, Williamstown's had a chance to, to uh, put some runs on the board. Hazen's had a chance to extend you know, their lead. And uh, the pitchers have sort of pitched themselves out of some jams. Like they really said, have. Times, so. They've gotten in some trouble tonight, Effort. and they've worked their way out of it. And some great plays, too, you know, particularly in the infield. Yep. And he's going to try and take third, and this throw pulls him off the base, and that is going to be back-to-back -back swipe bases for Gabe Dexter. Blue Devils taking a page out of the Hazen book with aggressive base it is. out here. Get a runner in scoring position Little here. Shopper thought he had him there. Throw pulled Crawford a little bit too far from the bag. Top of the six, 3-1, nobody out. Runner on third. Shopland and Spencer on their way. Uh, Shopland and Spencer on their way to the mound. This could be all for Menard, and he is pitched a beauty. Take that one from Major League as well. They come out to take Eddie Harris out of the game. Menard's going to stay. Oh, and they're going to stay stay with Menard. Menard, who's pitched to beauty. A few more to go to Vaughn, right? Yep. Get Vaughn up, <laughs> says Spencer. If we, hear, if we hear a wild thing come over the PA, we know. Yeah. See somebody come walking up from Hill over there, which I guess would be considered be our bullpen. That would be my walking song if I was a closer, I can tell you that. Menard is going to kick and deliver. That is hit. Very softly over to Revard, who's had a lot of action today over there at shortstop in That's the field. A place. He has. That's why I said Revard could be in contention for the James Salvis HCTV Player of the Game Award. There was a hitter a couple years ago. I can't remember if he played for Oakland or San Diego. His walk-up music was Careless Whisper by Wham, and I thought that was fantastic. Can't remember it. I, I, remember I don't it. know who it is. <laughs> so. Don't really know Wham all that well before uh, my time. Very mellow sax. There's a hit. That ball's hit hard. Speaking Revard. of Revard, he's going to look to home, but he's going to go get the sure out at first. A run does come in, though, for the Blue Devils as it's now a 3-2 Hazen Wildcat so the lead. aggressive base running by the Blue Devils pays off. It does. Is that's going to be... Makes it a one-run game. Is that is going to be an RBI for Max Dexter. Ground out into an RBI. So Revard, you know, not really a good idea to go home in that situation. You know, got to exactly. take the sure out at first. So Two you'll outs. eat the run. Two outs now for Menard. That is going to be a strike. Good pitch by Menard over the heart of the plate. I don't know. We might have to give that you know co-player of the game award. Uh, Revard's made some outstanding defensive He really has. Short. Andrew playing, of course, pitching well as well. That is fouled off hard down the right field line. That's headed for the Hudson soccer field. Who catches when Little Shopper doesn't catch? James Montgomery. And there is strike three, and Menard picks up strikeout number four. So I don't know four. who would be the backup to the backup. 
Yes, you know, in case the little shopper had to come I, in like I'm, Rick Vaughn and close things down. I thought Jaden Baker. I, I could be, yeah, I could be completely wrong, but I thought I saw Jaden get a little bit of catcher uh, in the game last week against Northfield. I think. Yep. I could be wrong. Well, you know, James Montgomery, we wish a speedy recovery. Hope to see right. him back behind the dish. AC sprain taken care of. Hope to see Jake Taylor back there sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so Major now, League, for those of you who haven't seen it, phenomenal baseball movie. If you like comedy, that is. Yeah. But still a good baseball movie nonetheless. Yeah. Not. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people know this, but uh, Charlie Sheen had played some serious baseball. He, uh, you know, I read yeah. a, a story on that movie, and of all the players that were, all the actors that were in that movie, he had the most baseball pedigree. Yeah. You know, he had pitched, I think he, I, I want to say he minor league. Yeah. And I was going to say, he, Charlie Sheen actually was he baseball he threw, player. like, in, Fast. I want to say, 80s. Yeah, so he, he was still throwing heat. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously not 101 like Rick Vaughn. Right. But. And, and they could tell, you know, just the way he kind of towed the rubber, the way he held himself, the way he threw the ball, um, he was he was good. The yep. worst, the worst one I read was uh, Dorn. Dorn. He, he had the guy who played Dorn. Yeah, had, had uh, Corbin Burnson. Yeah, had absolutely no baseball skill at all. Although I'm not gonna lie, Jake Taylor looked like a baseball player too. He really did. Yeah, and, looked kind of uh, like Gary Carter back there. And uh, was it Wesley Snipes? Yep. Who He's an athlete. Definitely has. Yeah, great Just athlete. A great athlete. He was also in White Man Can't Jump. Right. But but when it came to like strictly baseball, uh, Charlie Sheen definitely actually had going on. Clue Haywood, who played for. Who was the bad guy in that movie? Actually pitched in the majors. Really? I didn't yes, know that. was an all star. Didn't know that. Pitched for the uh, Brewers and a couple others. Big lefty. Yeah. I know. Weird. Batter in this movie. Pitcher in real life. Tom Berenger played. Yes. JK Wood. Yes, Tom Berenger, great actor. Yeah. As Brandon Crawford is going to step in now for the Hazen Wildcats, who lead three to two in the bottom of the sixth. Cats come in on a two-game win streak, 7-2 record, looking to extend it. A little bit closer game, though. Last two games, they won 10-zip. Yep. Brandon so wanted to swing. Hell's up, strike. As Gabe Dexter is going to stay on the hill for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Boy, he's pitched a beauty on that side, too. Whoa, yeah, Brandon Crawford it. fouls one back to us. That is going to the gym. That is going to hit the uh, Dave Morris Gymnasium. I don't really know if it has a, a name. The Kid Wildcat, Dan. going to get it. Yep. Call it He's the Wildcat, the Dan, and Crawford is going to wave and miss as that is going to be Dexter's sixth punch out of the day. That's right, the One, Wildcat, Dan. Yes, the Wildcat, Dan, as I call it on the broadcast, and you call it as well. As Wyatt Flanders is going to step in now for the Hazen Wildcats to face Gabe Dexter. Dexter kicks and fires. And that is going to be high for ball one. Wild pop of the mitt there on that one. Saw some dust go everywhere. Nothing like the pop of the mitt. Oh, nothing like it. There's only one sound in baseball sweeter, and it's the crack of the bat. Speak of the devil. Hard hit to the shortstop. Right there to make nice the play over there by Max Dexter of the Williamstown Blue Devils. Really, really solid play. Gotta have quick hands to make that play. Absolutely. Looking like Xander Bogarts, Derek Jeter. As now Dan DeGroslier steps in, double D. Double D at the plate. That is going to be high for a ball by Gabe Dexter, who's pitched the whole game so far for the Williamstown Blue Devils. Both pitchers so far. Yes, we'll see well, if Menard go go, We'll see if Menard can go the distance. Oh, swing and a miss. Good pitch there by Dexter. And low strike call there. Seen it all game though. We have, we have. Is that a little bit of a low? low a little tolerance. bit of a low zone. About yeah. normally it's knees to knees to chest, knees to numbers, but and wave and a miss. Gabe Dexter a little fired up there on the mound as he picks up strikeout number seven. As let's see if the Wildcats can hold him off here in the top of the seventh. Want to do the sponsors? Absolutely. One more time. Cats up 3-2. Let's give our sponsors a read here. Our sponsors for this game, Hazen Union Varsity Baseball against the Williamstown Blue Devils. 
Our sponsor is Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HCTV Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, Lance Hall on color, and doing play-by-play. -play. The great one, James Salvis. Yes, thank, thank you very much. I'm joined by legendary Lance Hall, as I like to call him. As I said that a couple years ago during my tenure with HCTV basketball, uh, during my tenure with HCTV's basketball broadcasts, after Lance Hall rocks the Wildcat den with his starting lineups. And I'll tell you, that whole thing sort of came up along as a total fluke. DJ um, Lance Hall. I was uh, at the Hardwick Elementary sixth grade tournament one year. And it got down to the finals, and uh, I went up to Tammy, and I'm like, hey, Tammy, why don't we give these kids, you know, something here? Let me do starting lineups. And she's like, yeah, go for it. So I grabbed the mic and, you know, did my best Michael Buffer out there, and Hazen AD, John Sperry, was refereeing that day. Yep. And he came up to me after, and she's like, you're coming to Hazen next year. And I'm like, huh? He goes, that was awesome. You're coming to Hazel. I'm like, John, really? Were you with HCTV at that time? No, I was just there, you know, as a spectator. And no, I was there writing stories for the Gazette. I was covering yep. the tournament for the Gazette. And uh, John fell in love with the way I did it. Uh, the next year I came up and just sort yep. of again did Hard. my best Michael Buffer. Hard not to fall in love with the way you do it, Lance. It just sounds so smooth. Yeah. Such a great voice. Total, like a, total gift. I lost my mind when I heard you say Tyler Rebard's name for the first time. Oh, my God, you did a great job with that. Just a total gift. I, it's just something that just sort of, it's there. Speaking I, of Tyler Rebard, he's going to head to the mound. Tyler try and Re shut things down. T-Rex on the mound. All right. T-Rex going to try and shut things down for the Wildcats. All right, yeah, that's right. Top of the seventh here. Cats up 3-2. There's his hit. And there's a base hit. Tyson Davison's going to go to shortstop. So who is, and is that Andrew Menard at second then? Yes, I believe it yes, is. Yes, it is. As they move the Tyson. Mahler. As they moved Tyson over to short. Yes, the as Mahler. As James has christened him, christened him. The Andrew, the Mahler. The Mahler, Andrew Menard. Menard. <laughs> so we were trying to think that's of fantastic. a nice uh, hockey nickname Great, for him, and yeah. I got one. Hockey, baseball, basketball nickname, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So now you see the coach and the batter going to talk it over. Riley Chaney steps in as Ari Shoemaker started off the inning with a base knock. Runner on first. Cats clinging to that 3-2 lead. Look they at sure are. Get this game Let's see if Rivard can work out of trouble here. As the coach says orders out loud there for the Williamstown Blue Devils, given the old strategy to the Hazen Wildcats, not what I would do. Yeah. He's going, little shopper with the throw. It's right on the money, and he is hosed at That's second base. What a throw behind the plate by Little Shopper. I say, Ethan Shopper is just one of those players. He's been, you know, a little off at the plate today. Comes up with a big play right there when you like need Like you him. said, comes up when you need him. That's that's the Shopper way. It is. Behind the plate comes up big. Big with the throw there. One out now. One out now is. Nobody on. As uh, Cheney steps in. Low ball scooped out of the dirt by Little Shopper. Reverend loses his hat. As it is now a 1-0 count, or maybe 1-1, one, one. yeah, 1-1 one, one count now. 2-1 to Cheney. 21, what a good number. Deion Sanders. Yep, Neon Deion. Ooh, high. Ball bounces in the dirt. Oh, high over Shoplin's head. T-Rex. I also think... Uh, Great throw by Shopland, throwing him out, but I think it helped when your uh, coach tells you he's going to go. 3-1 <laughs> count now. Staggers the imagination. 3-1 count now to Cheney. Low, and I've seen that pitch called a strike today. Now both, this game a lot tighter. I just want to grab my notes here for a moment. 
Uh, in the first two games, we beat this team 14-0 and 9-6 back on May 1st and May 6th. So three two games. So these two teams know each other. They do. Uh, this has been a great ball game today. And next Tuesday, one that I can't wait to be on the call for. Next Tuesday, my alma mater, People's Academy. Travels the Route here. 15 rival of the Hazen Wildcats come to town. Man on now for Williamstown. One out. Throwing the dirt by Tyler Rivard. I think you'd want to look for the double play right here and just get this over with. I think you would too. Try to roll one up to second or short, or maybe even third. Rivard, a little off. Yep. A little low. Although nothing's going to get past Shopland at, behind the plate. 3-0. 3, and oh. pick. Three yeah, uh, 2 oh. There goes the runner. Down to second. And he is He's gone. Out. Tried to run before Rivard threw the pitch. Rivard wasn't having it. Fires back to second, and he gets him. Seemed like a rather easy out right there. Yep. And now the Wildcats are one out away from shutting this thing down. Rivard's going to pick up the save. I might have but to. If Rivard can shut this down. I think it is. He's what? 3-0 three, three count right here on this batter? 2-0, I believe. 2-0. Trying to see how many dots are over there. There's, There's a, strike. a strike. So 2-1. Yep, 2-1. Definitely don't want to. 2-1 uh, count to Taven Rulo of the Williamstown Blue Devils. Don't want to put Rulo on now. I keep giving him chances here, though. There's and another there strike. is another strike. And Rivard's hat comes off yet again. T-Rex Tyler Rivard, one strike away from shutting this thing down for the Hazen Wildcats. Oh, just fouled off by Tavian. Going to make him work for it. Sure is. These pesky Blue Devils. Many battles with these Wildcats. Cats one strike, one out away from ending this game. Sure are. Once again, a beautiful night for baseball. Rivard fires. Low. That is going to be low ball. I thought it was a strike. I saw low. I saw was low. Wasn't just a little low. Three and two. Three, two, full count to Tavian Rulo. Rivard's going to kick and fire. Inside. That is inside. Ball four. Rivard issues his second walk. Giving the, leaving the door open a little bit here for the Blue Devils. Yeah, he is. As we know they can hit. Is now James De now James DeForge is going to step up for the Blue Devils. Blue Devils are a tough team to put away sometimes, as they can hit, and they're pretty good in the field. And we saw some good pitching from them today too. Really, we did. Dexter pitched a great game. He There's really did. A ground ball underneath oh. Menard, and going to third. He's and out. He's out. Nice. Try to stretch it down there to third. And that is going to be the ball game. And we saw the aggress aggressive base running sort of work against Williamstown in that yes. inning. So, but, the Hazen... but then again, why not try? What have you got right. to lose? And the Hazen Wildcats take this one 3-2. to two. Today, my player of the game honors are going to have to go to Andrew Menard, who pitched an absolute gem on the mound for the Wildcats today. And Rivard gets the co-player of the game. Yeah, made some great defensive Signing plays off, in short. I'm James Salvis. Let me give the uh, let's give the sponsors one more read All before right. we go here, James. Uh, the Cats extend their winning streak to three. Uh, once again, they'll play uh, Thursday night against Enosburg, doubleheader here Saturday uh, against Blue Mountain. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Supports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. Liz on camera, James, you slayed it today. Thank you. James Salvas with the play-by-play, -play, Lance Hall with the color. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.